StockTrades.com. Today we have John Lee with us. John is the chairman of Silver Elephant, which can be traded as ELEF on the Toronto, correct? Correct. Toronto Stock Exchange, yeah. ELEF, and they have uh, advanced a silver project. John, let's first, before we get into the company, talk to us about your background. I know that we've spoken for many years, that you've been interested in the commodity space and the junior mining space. How did you get interested in investing and running a, a junior miner? Hey, Jeff, I was great to be uh, great to be back on your show. I started my career in the Silicon Valley in the late 90s, and I graduated from Rice with degrees in engineering and uh, in economics. I'm a chartered financial analyst, and I was doing very well and uh, semi-retired in year 2000 when the company I worked for got bought by Oracle. I was in the enterprise software sales uh, business. And uh, since then, then uh, I moved from Silicon Valley to Vancouver to visit a girlfriend of mine at the time. Was this, I was a bachelor, and you cannot be in Vancouver and not be in the junior mining business. So I, that's how I stumbled onto the junior mining scene. And uh, back then, I remember vividly, actually quite, clear, quite, quite strongly, that that was when Gordon Brown dumped the Bank of England's last uh, a batch of gold at two hundred fifty dollars. So that was the absolute bottom. So I was very lucky uh, to get in the market at the absolute bottom. So I was just really curious and what's happening. It was brand new industry and uh, to me, and um, I was following Warren Buffett. So there's a lot of sort of different things that led me to uh, believe that the dollar was peaked and that the uh, it was a big commodity boom that's coming. So I was doing very well trading my own money and was uh, living um, on the cloud in in, in Canada. Um, managing my own portfolio, doing extremely well until the financial crisis came in 2009, when my portfolio was completely decimated. And uh, remember, Tech Cominco was like two dollars, and uh, it was horrific. And that's how that's how the idea of starting a mining company come about out of almost necessity, as I was resuscitating all these, you know dozen also juniors or was I was a major shareholder uh, which everybody's asking for uh, for private placement so I started the company and took a shell and and uh, all of a sudden it's 11 years later uh, jab and uh, you know I started out with companies I own or assets that I know and practice the m as and 10 years later we're still running the same company we're um, we've raised about 140 150 million dollars in the capital market and we did a lot of M&As and accumulated a lot of experience and talked to, you know, really understood the market job, if anything, from, the in, from, from both the dimension, from both perspective from an investor and also from an insider. And uh, so now Elephant is, is uh, back on, is, 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 um, is doing what well. We have, what, six or seven assets. We've been on a uber aggressive in, acquisitions of properties because we, I do believe, Jeb, like you, that we do have another major boom coming, not, not you know, the same magnitude, if not better than, than the China boom, right? That started the whole affair back in early 2000. So that's how it came about. That's a very interesting story, John. And, you know, a lot of us that come into the junior miners, we have to go through sometimes a bear market. Um, you know, we sometimes come in when the good times are good, and then uh, many of us have to go and suffer through a bear market. And we learn a lot during those bear market cycles. And you've you mentioned that you've been acquiring uh, projects, and you own now this 100% controlled uh, silver lead zinc project uh, in Bolivia. Now, yes. so, so talk to us a little bit. You know, because for U.S. investors, I'm U.S. based and a lot of us um, are a little concerned with Bolivia when we first hear it, because in the media, you know, uh, you know, it, it's you know, there's been a lot of turmoil recently political. So, you know, talk to us a little bit about your experience in the jurisdiction and why maybe U.S. investors who are reluctant maybe should take a second look. Mm. Well, Jeff, the company is renamed in, and become what is today Silver Elephant just a year ago. So we were laying low, just uh, you know, trying to keep the light on. And I was I was a shareholder, so I've been keeping the company up um, on a, on a, on on on. A, we've been surviving and sort of keeping a low profile until 2017. 
and um, and that's when we started started acquisitions. And uh, in, in last year, we changed the company's name to Silver Elephant because we see a rise in silver, and the silver was fourteen dollar at the time. So the, our timing has always been pretty good. Uh, our core, the company's core focus right now is silver. We have not one but three silver projects in Bolivia. I first visited Bolivia in uh, two thousand and five, and just so you know, that, uh, Jack, right now the company has um, the flagship project called Pulukayo that has over 120 million ounces of silver in measure indicated category and, and about 10% inferred. And there are two other silver projects we purchased uh, last year. So right now, altogether, we have three projects uh, and uh, we're, 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 the rig's been very active on all three projects and uh, there's still a rig turning out soon in a while. And we can talk about the, uh, the drill results and this brand new discovery we made. On the topic of Bolivia, um, I first went to Bolivia in 2005 for a, a silver junior that I, that, I, that I was a big major shareholder. Um, the, uh, and I visit, for personally spent uh, over two years of my physical time in Bolivia in the last five years. So I'm quite familiar with Bolivia and quite comfortable in Bolivia. Um, the company's P, uh, uh, our elephant's ground crew technical team in Bolivia has been operating in the country since 2005. So we do have very good knowledge. We're one of the early entrants in Bolivia. And despite all the rhetoric and, and, uh, and uh, discussions, the company has been operating in Bolivia very peacefully. Um, and, and, and the reason is we have a very strong local, uh, we'll have a very strong relationship with the local communities. Jack, if there is a problem, always start at the local level. And when things got to the federal level, it's out of hand, then, then it's forced the hands of the federal authorities to take actions. So we have an excellent relationship with all the local communities um, of which we operate our project. And we have worked very well also with the Evo Morales party, which is still in charge. So, um, you know, the country, and, and despite the lack of foreign investment, still the sixth largest silver producer in the world, produces more silver than Argentina. Uh, Bolivia, and it's one of the most stable economies in South America. I mean, its currency, its GDP, uh, makes a very good social order. So I think that the Bolivia is, uh, as I mentioned in the last, per, for the past year, is due for re-rating in the international investment stage, and it has been doing so. If you look at, um, there's been a couple of major discoveries made, made by the Silver Junior market by New Pacific, and their billion market cap by Eloro was our neighbor. And not so like 150 kilometer drive and they're something around 300 million and i think that you know the pendulum usually swing one way to the other way same is the case in bolivia we had that gone to a very conservative approach in attracting foreign investment to now they felt like they're ready to open the door which they are doing right now Jeff. so we're very comfortable however i think the caveat is when you're in these kind of jurisdictions um you just got to, you really got to be very, very hands-on. That's what the company is about. We've learned our lessons in the past. Uh, in, and uh, we've got to be very careful in just picking, putting fingers on the pulse. And that's what we are doing. So we're very, we feel very comfortable. Bolivia, I think we do for re-rating and we have, and we put money, money where our mouth is, is, is we not only have one, but three very active projects in Bolivia. Yeah, you make a good point, John. Many of us who were opposed to Bolivia missed out on a lot of opportunities, as you mentioned, with uh, New Pacific and uh, Edeloro, and uh, I, I believe uh, Pan American yes. also uh, is in, uh, it has an operating uh, silver mine, the San Vicente. San Vicente. Mine. And also Sumitomo is being operating in San Cristobal peacefully for the last 15 years. And uh, you know, Bolivia is one of the countries that has a free, uh, free currency exchange. And um, Sumitomo has ex uh, uh, repatriated hundreds of millions of dollars on an annual basis from, from what is the second largest uh, open pit silver mine in the world today. So it's a, it's a fairly stable country and the, the maintains good social orders. So we feel quite comfortable, Jeff. John, you just announced some new discoveries. Silver Elephant was deemed as one of the best 50 OTCQX companies in 2021. Have investors missed the boat I mean, on Bolivia and the silver company and silver elephant, or is are we just really getting started here? Hey Jeff, not at all. I, I, first of all, in OTCQX, uh, Elephant was uh, uh, awarded that. We're the top 50 OTC 
uh, over the counter in the United States uh, in terms of volume. So that really speaks for um, the exposure or the market or the the market appeal the company has. And I will probably venture to say we're probably the smallest market cap <laughs> to have it be included in OTC 50. There are other couple of silver juniors that I saw were two, three, four times our market cap. So our volume is really doing tremendous. We traded 90 million, 99 million shares in the first two months of this year. And that's over 50% of our company's flow in just two months. Uh, Bolivia is one of the very few uh, least discovered country and uh, there's incredible potential there where um, you can still be walking on some of the uh, uh, projects and, and graph silver samples are 100, 200, 500 grams on surface. So this is one of the very few countries that, that still offer that kind of risk and reward. Um, and uh, I think clearly there, there's, I think in particularly in the case of Jeff for Silver Elephant, because we had a bit of legacy past, um, there, there are people that have made a lot of money and uh, exit the stock. Um, and I mean, we're, uh, we're up 300% uh, from where we were a year ago. However, Jeff, looking forward, we're only, uh, we're rem like we're not the same company as we were a year ago because all these acquisitions we made. So while there's a lot of turnover, we're in a consolidation pattern, we have very strong support level. Um, I think there's a tremendous upside to be realized through uh, the three of our projects. Uh, I think there are people are still could have been misunderstood. There are some of them may be misunderstood. And I think some of the earlier investors had left the company and the new investor are still digesting uh, sort of the news that we're putting out. So I think there's a, a lot of room to grow for our company in particular. John, you also have some exposure. You recently acquired a project, a nickel project. And nickel's a battery metal that's done um, very well recently, um, a nickel sulfide project in yes. Manitoba. Could you highlight that? Because that also is very interesting to me because nickel, uh, you know, Elon Musk has said many times publicly that nickel is the key uh, metal for the lithium ion battery. Uh, and I'm wondering what you guys are up to with the battery metal as exposure that you also get with Silver Elephant outside of Bolivia. Yes, well, Jeff, I like the opportunity to maybe talk a little bit about our silver project uh, towards the end, but this nickel project, um, as you know, Jeff, life never really go the way you planned. <laughs> so we're well on our way in our silver. Silver is our DNA, as you and I know. I know David Morgan and all these uh, people, industry insiders. So we're very silver buck. It's in our DNA. That's why our name of our company. And we raised over twenty million dollars in our silver endeavor. So the, the the nickel thing came along. It's really Elon Musk that said in July that hey, we're going through revolution in, in EVs and we need silver. Please mine as much silver as you can because don't wait because we need silver. We need nickel, and nickel is all about EV. And even the most conservative estimate have put EV penetration and growth at 30% of the overall auto market by 2030. You have 10 countries that have outlined the timeline to ban ICEs altogether. So at 30 million uh, penetration rate, 100 million vehicle per year, and that assumes 0%, zero growth in autos, you're looking at 30 million EVs, you need about 2.5 billion pounds of nickel, okay? And nickel production in 2020 was 5.5 billion pounds. That's a 4% decline from 2019. So you have a structured deficit already in the nickel market and you tag on to the EV demand, which is gonna increase the, 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 uh, the, the required nickel by 40%, which you see a perfect market there. And because of my relationship in the industry, we're able to acquire what we believe is the best open pit nickel sulfide project in all of Canada at a distressed sale, we pay cash up front, we close the sales quickly. Of what we think that there's a billion pounds of nickel in this project could be not Minago at 0.5% nickel sulfide and sulfide is extremely hard to come by. So overall, it's a bit of a one-off. It's not something that Jeff, that we just went off out of the blue and uh, acquired some greenfield in Iceland. And then uh, I think it was a carefully calculated, we definitely weighed the pros and cons. And however, I think that project doesn't require a lot more drilling or studies was fully permitted. It was over $45 million spent over 68,000 meters drilling. So it doesn't require a lot of attention or a lot of upkeep. 
it's an optionality on nickel. However, our budget and focus still remains on silver. Jeff, hopefully answers your question. So tell us more about the focus right now for Silver Elephant. I know that you just put out news uh, recently this week about a new discovery. Yes, Jeff, our, uh, our uh, flagship project is Pulukayo, it's 120 million ounces. And it's, it used to be a historical producer, second largest silver mine in the world, 650 million ounces in production. We're reconfiguring the project as open bit because of the vein exposed to surface. This new discovery, the results were just announced yesterday. The name is Sunawaya, and it's a project that Elephant acquired last September. And since then, we did a bit, a bit of, uh, we did, it's a 60 square kilometer land pack, it's huge. We announced two sets of drill results. Uh, the results yesterday was uh, three meters of 400 grams of silver, within 10 meters, 150 grams of silver. So it's quite respectable, fairly high grade, a little bit narrower intervals. But, uh, but that was on the backdrop of an, of an initial set of drill results that came out in January. And that was 143, 137 meters of 36 grams of silver. So what we've come so far, Jeff, is we've demonstrated the, the, the uh, long sections of mineralization. We also demonstrated their pockets of very high grade mineralization. Keep in mind this 2,300 meter drilling, 15 hole was at 250 meters average spacing between the drill holes. Is, is this three kilometer trend we're drilling just in the second half of the project with 15 holes. So there's, there's a huge wide spacings and 100% of the drill holes had encountered mineralization. Now we're just about solving the puzzle, right? Is there a high grade pocket? Is there enough consistency um, in, in, the, in the deposit to put together a sizable deposit um, that could be economic? And we're, we have about another six holes to come with the results due in April and uh, we're entering into the, what we call the sweet spot from the north to the south. And for, logi for logistical reason, Jeff, not, not because of we're sweet picking the, the best target to start with. And the reason that we think the south is the best is based on the 950 sample grass we've taken and over 50% is in the southernmost portion which we're just entering the drill. And just by the way, 87% of the 950 assays, silver grabs, had turned out to be positive assay, silver assay from one to 500 grams of silver. And last point on this project soon in a while, it borders a deposit called Melkukota, literally 200 meter from the uh, deposit. And Melkukota has 350 million ounces of silver. So there's a lot of positive attributes and going for this project. And we're, um, we're just eagerly awaiting for the results from the remaining high five holes. So far we've demonstrated continuity Good long sections of mineralization. We've also demonstrated pockets of very high grade. Now we're just, we're just going to combine the two together and look for long sections of a high grade. And, and uh, so far, I think we're quite pleased. It's not every day, Jab, you can walk into a brand new greenfield discovery. It's never been drilled before and drill 100 meters of, of silver. And we know with very high grade pockets of, of silver. Uh, so I think we're pretty excited. And, uh, Definitely caught the eyes of a lot of people. We traded 2 million shares yesterday. But I think right now we're just going through that process of some of the legacy shareholders that are cashing out and the new guys are coming in. Yeah. Well, you can get more information about Silver Elephant. Uh, if you go you, if you go to their web, website, silverelef.com, you can also email ir at silverelef dot com this the company can be traded uh on the toronto stock exchange as elef and also can be traded on the otcqx as it was one of the top 50 performers in 2021 as s i l e f drilling right now just announced the highest silver and zinc grade intercepts to date from the the maiden drill program john lee thank you so much Chairman of Silver Elephant, thank you so much for being here today and for giving us a brief introduction into the company. Well, thank you, Jab. You and I know way back, and I uh, also recommend the uh, your followers check out my Twitter. Just Google Silver Elephant John Lee. I'm very 
I, I chew quite a bit. I used to write and speak at different conferences. Right. The Silver Owls were in a full-time job. It's not time to do that I remember, anymore. So. I remember your articles on Kiko. Remember your articles. Yeah, I love to write, and so I, I chew quite a bit. I tell it like it is. You not only can I get news from Silver Elephant, but from just the market, uh, from the market, um, you know, silver market and gold market. Look forward to provide an update to your fan base again. And thank you for the time. Thank you, and I'm glad we could connect again. Thank you. Yep.